dun, 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 dun. This is the part where you get on the plane and it draws a big line across the map. Just stop now. One second. Watch this still have Wi-Fi. While you what? Watch this still have Wi-Fi. Fi-Fi. Come on, status. Status. Fi-Fi is... Ah. Did you check in at the Geek Group? <laughs> uh, no. I'm just putting heading home now. Post at the top of the top. Ollie, we good? Heading to the airport! Figure at least. Uh. You know what really sucked? Walking around with that camera? I didn't get to say half the shit I've done here. I know. I'm walking around and it's just like, uh, me and Doogie hung those lights for the electricians to wire up. Doogie hung those lights for the electricians to wire up. <laughs> yeah, Paul Muffin to buy me a car. I declined. Nice. You going to get your own car or are you going to even bother? I'm going to get my own car. I don't. I don't really like having a shit. I hate Christmas. I hate birthdays. I can't stand any of the celebratory events. <laughs> Like, it's by it's. I will give you the capital if you buy your own car. You will then pay me back. I don't have that here for my head. There's just two highways. It's too hard. No. <laughs> one goes north, one goes east, right? Yes. One goes north, south, one goes east, west. YouTube Music Mafia. <laughs> it's the DMCA takedown. Yeah.
Yeah, see, there's the sign for the yeah, airport. It's one now. <laughs> Notice how there's no potholes? <laughs> yeah. It's got smooth as well. It's still made out of concrete. Look how bad that shit is for the environment. Probably no worse than the rest of humanity. Yeah. Fair point. yellow I've ever seen. I know, right? <laughs> Super yellowy orangey goodness. GPS hardware or like yeah. on this phone? I think so. Okay. I want you to run out of lots of That's a water cell, right? Yeah. Why the fuck do you store water like that? Well, when it's that much water and it's that high above the ground, it creates water pressure. Like, you don't have to have as much pump horsepower to make Still gonna get it water up pressure. Up. Well, yeah, you gotta get it up there, but that's the easy part. Well, I guess it's, it's all kind of an easy part, but... Comcast. The building we want to build down. The building, yeah. Comcast should burn. <laughs> Comcast. The evil corporate entity that controls the planet. Who controls the media? That's the real question. Who controls the media? Yeah. Rupert Murdoch owns Fox News. So Murdoch, he's the evil overlord, right? <laughs> <laughs> he's just like feeding shit into Americans' heads. <laughs> he's the evil overlord. He is Darth Sidious. You've seen the rap news with Rupert Murdoch, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> you know that shit? <laughs> It's probably not on the DC table. No, it's not. about a doomsday is a big hoax. When the light is out like that, Hello, it becomes a four-way stop. Hello, I'm grateful host, streaming another cool. episode on the frequency of juice news infused with a healthy yeah, dose of sanity. Good morning, Correct. viewers. Tune in. Get the round as we delve into a rap news update for the year 2012. Here's kind of notchy. Greetings and welcome to 
and to our latest transmission sent direct from the beating part of this internet. The one remaining open channel where information can We haven't spent a lot of time in six minutes recently, have we? As a shadowy spectre yeah. hangs over our ability to access and assess the facts. Is an honest media the force that can free and restore balance and peace in this far oh. reach of the galaxy? Okay. The battle has shifted at light speed to <laughs> cyberspace where rebel journalists have made the jump to hyperspace, challenging the establishment's grip on information and are now being pursued by its sinister agents. To learn more of what's happening, we're set to bring in figures on opposite ends of the spectrum. Thus, we welcome our first journalist at hand, WikiLeaks founder, rebel publisher, Julian Assange. Mr. Assange, good to have you back on the show. Robert, it's good to be heck. I mean, back. Hello. Tell us what's happened since last we spoke. Well, WikiLeaks has continued to deliver masterstrokes. For speaking more truth to power than all papers combined, we've been ostracized and greatly maligned by the lamestream media where balls are sadly lacking and seen the state's haranguing of alleged whistleblower Bradley Mann. I've been under mansion arrest, attacked by Serco, then the bastard imposed an extrajudicial embargo, cutting off our PayPal donors and credit card flow. Why? Have you broken any laws or been charged? No, but a secret grand jury has issued a sealed indictment saying I'm aiding the enemy. They're seeking to extradite me. I'm confused. Who is the enemy? Clearly, since WikiLeaks aids democracy, the enemy is the people. You and me. Okay, to compare to this, we turn to another Australian journalist. His media empire spans the equator, influencing every one of us in the world. It's the Emperor of News Corps, Rupert Murdoch. Hello, Robert. Tell us your take on justice in fight playing monopoly against the world and winning you buy all the real for the state the times the sun the sky and many stars are on the mind i expanded my news of the world order patiently now my death star stations are fully operational you've changed the face of the news with tabloids pay tv i foresaw that by putting titties on page three amidst a chronicle of crime sports and inanity scandalous spam which the proles soak up avidly my empire would expand globally spreading the fear giving me the power to make or crash political careers Lots of you have transformed journalism's focus by exposing secret dealings or by keeping truths in closed though. Can you explain why one of you is a rich media mogul while the other is hunted like a criminal interloper? In 03, the media were feeding us lies about WMD. WikiLeaks is here to ensure history won't repeat. We publish truth instead of lies. That's certainly why we're being persecuted. We're doing journalism right. You will pay the price for your lack of television. You're headed straight for an American prison. Journalists, take a good look at this rebel fool. What's happening to him? Soon could happen to you. If you strike me down, the movement you're attacking will become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. This generation is burning the mass media to its foundations. Truth is a virus and courage is contagious. Nah, 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 nah. You can't knock me out the fox, but I Who see the new Western capable out? of hacks. The scrap for yeah, me shows that no, we are no, alike. No. Julian, no. my son, come over to the dark side. I'm sorry to interrupt this riveting debate, but to learn more of the alleged Nicarine's fate, nice we cross to the Pentagon. One narrow bandwidth, this one legitimate open channel to transmit locally, globally, unrestricted, is currently being threatened with a kill switch. Will the web remain so free to stand if the Senate votes credit for Joseph Lieberman? And here's the man to tell us the factors representing the Pentagon. It's General Baxter. Good to see you, General. Nice to be back, son. Can you explain this kill switch and why this reaction? It's simple, Bob. We can't just try and relax. We're in a state of war with our eye on the facts and troops will die in Iraq if we lie on our back jacking off to porn during a cyber attack protect the data or the terrorists will erase them or we'll be stuck sucking titties in the playpen but using the kill switch won't that increase the mayhem? it may then but at least it'll be our freaking mayhem and it beats waiting for what the axis of evil can prove to be this is an actual matter of national security the net confuses me but I'm prepared for this I'm assuming every human is a cyber Cyber-terrorists. Right. To compare to this now, the next to speak is Julian Assange, co-founder of WikiLeaks. Julian Assange, Hello. it's nice that you've surfaced. Tell us 
What is WikiLeaks? What is the site's purpose? Well, the site's purpose is to provide a safe haven in the new dawn of information, documentation, whistleblowing, bell ringing, truth speaking, all of this. You can link it using our unique technologies. Knowledge is power, so our promises. If the documents from politics, military, industrial complexes, Mormon church conferences, these lame sororities, no matter what it is, the sources remain anonymous. Thus, we usher in a new era of scientific journalism. Articles should be researched with precision and contain links to sources they refer to them. This will encourage openism and deter the hidden. People will have heard that you were catapulted further into the public eye by one leak. Yes, yes. collateral murder while troops cause gore from a lurking chopper. Media whores ignore war and pour awards on the herds locker. General WikiLeaks, I'm familiar with it. Julian, buddy, we should chat. Come in for a minute. I don't think so, General. That's strictly forbidden. I keep my location and my identity hidden. What? You better listen and do what you're told to do. Your grave will be hidden when we get a hold of you. We'll chuck you on the Barbie flames like shrimps. Didn't you see what we did to David Hicks? Well, I was going to wait until the end of the week, but I think it's time to release the very next WikiLeak. After collateral murder, this is collateral killing spree. A voice you'll recognize committing acts of infamy. You're betraying your flag, Snitch! That clip's out of context! Those are standard tactics! Uh, Mr. Assange, we interrupt the news feed for a message from a regular guest, Terrence Moonseed. Bob, WikiLeaks is actually a ploy. The CIA is backing this Draco Malfoy. To sow confusion, high-tech Decepticon, a blue beam illusion, PsyOps Echelon. He's Saruman, a deep throat in the system, leaking war just to keep the UFOs hidden. Drop the facts of alien contact now, Assange! And BP's leak, it's all there in the hourglass. Uh, Mr. Assange, it has been suggested that WikiLeaks represents excessive power for the unelected. Is there a danger that you could bring to the public eye something which should genuinely remain classified? Uh, what? Rather to something like this? Welcome to Gamma Pi Delta. Now you're my bitch. Uh, how did you get those portraits? I told you, Robert, we never disclose our sources. Well, there's just enough time left to end the show, summing up what we know and what we've yet to know. It's getting hard to tell what's real and what's fiction when secrecy and censorship control the whole spectrum. So let's consider how Julian Assange and his team channeled a potent tool for total transparency, shattering schemes and the myth we've been sold by a fourth estate that rolled over and did as it's told, training us all to forget and forgo. The truth leaks like oil in the Gulf of Mexico. If we know what our wars look like, are we at risk of not knowing who the good guys are? Keep your wits about you, the battle lines emerge, an information war with an appetite for turning the great walls of China, Palestine and Berlin into firewalls, blacklist, a wire curtain over this small crucial window of opportunity, the internet, unprecedented global community and ethical evolution, telepathic synapse, while all major media sources have been hijacked, picture this as we part, our perception of reality expressed as a chart, we lost TV to Murdoch, the press to the sharks, this internet, our last channel to connect to the mark. No rhetorical questions at last. If we lose this frequency, we'll be left in the dark. 2002 Grand Caravan. Stuff's missing. And that's broken. Got the radiator out. It was leaking. So, over here, we have a new one. And the new cap too, because that's important. So, let's see what's in the box. I've been working on this an hour. 
Oh hell yeah, new hardware and everything. Shiny. to transfer the rubber over. Don't know if I have holes for it. We'll find out, I guess. Alright, so I've installed the hardware, there, the clips to hold the fans on, I'll install the hardware for this after the radiator's in, I got this off the old radiator, I broke that there, it was just rusted, but we'll put this in on the new radiator so air is properly channeled over, so let's throw this sucker in, alright, new radiator is installed, it's balls deep in there. We're all put together. It's 14.30. So it took me two hours at the absolute most. Uh, here's the funnel. I reuse the coolant. So what I do is I get one of these paper paint filter funnels that you can get from a paint supply shop from PPG and I just put that in a regular funnel and then it filters out all the crap because when that sits under there and it's catching coolant some of the shit on the car gets washed into the pan you obviously don't want that in your cooling system so I strain it out like that and it works out really good so I'm gonna go ahead and finish topping this up and then we will test the coolant and make sure that it's good for sub frozen temperatures alright so we are out on a test drive. I am at Taco Bell. The heat is nice and warm. This thing has a bitchin' heater in it. I'm not even on research. Oh yeah. Low fuel. Good thing I'm not driving too far. We're just basically doing a lot of sitting, idling, build up pressure in the cooling system, letting the coolant mix, and the plan is to pull it back in, check for leaks, which I don't expect any, and then I'm going to let it completely cool, at which point I will test the coolant again to make sure that the coolant in the block after it mixed with the coolant in the radiator is still enough, there's still enough antifreeze to keep it from freezing. It is negative 20 out here with the wind chill currently. Fucking cold. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. What can I get for you today? Uh, may I please have one number seven with extra chicken? Okay, so I have to taco with that. Uh, soft taco. And a Pepsi to drink. And an else? yeah, an order of nachos, and that'll be all. And is everything on the screen correct? Yes. No dessert. No, thank you. Okay, it's gonna be eight fifty-six. Be the second one, please. Thanks.
coolant gauge is just off the quarter of the way up mark. Not even close to halfway. It was actually about there and then it cooled back down, so the thermostat must have opened. Washed my coat. Oh, it's all clean. No more fire coat. It smells good. It's not black anymore. How are you? Good. 856. Large Pepsi. Thanks. Did you need any sauces today? Uh, no sauce. No sauce. Thank you. Seven and Saturday. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. No idea what song that is. I think I just made that up. It's realistically possible I didn't though because randomness works that way. All of this snow blowing everywhere. I would have like relocated you so you could see out the window and see how gnarly it is, but I had to roll down the window to do the drive through thing. So you're over there on the windshield. Suspension on this needs some work. But well, it's got 218,000 miles on it, so that's, that's pretty good. Especially for a Chrysler. Well, it's a Dodge, but it's the same thing. I think last night. And it's not the first time. And there goes, there goes a town and country right now. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. This is, a, this is a Grand Caravan. And I think it's twice now I've called this a town and country. I guess it's not as exuberant. Someone else here has a Mercury Cougar just like Brian.
gonna let it idle up. I'm gonna hold it at like 1500 for a moment. I'm gonna open the door and pull it inside. And as soon as I shut it down, we should be at maximum cooling system pressure. I've been running it for about half an hour. It idled and I held it at 2,500, 3,000 RPM for a while. Got the cooling system nice and hot. Pressure's good, no bubbles. So that's it, we're, we're good to go. I am thoroughly satisfied that this thing doesn't leak coolant anymore and will properly hold cooling system pressure. So cool, ah done. For those of you that haven't seen any computer videos in a while, here's some. This is an Apple product. Yeah, it's next serve, and it's the PowerPC one. And what would you expect? An Intel machine? No, not on this channel. <laughs> this is a dual G5. I gave it five gigs of RAM, and. The idea is I'm not allowed to have my big server powered on here anymore because it draws a lot of electricity. I can understand. I, I get it. The problem is moving everything somewhere else. I My entire life is stored on that box and I chose that box because Chances are it will still work in 20 years. I bet you it will. I've only had it two or two, maybe three years at the absolute most. And it's had over 17,000 hours of uptime since I've owned it. And yeah, Solaris, I kind of want to get away from Solaris. I want to run a modern Linux kernel. Uh, but Linux just, it doesn't work as good as Solaris does. Nothing compares to a real Unix system built specifically, a real Unix operating system built specifically for the hardware that it's running on. And so, yeah, I've been tasked with finding a server that doesn't take so much electricity. And I need a way to store my data reliably so I don't lose anything. Now, the there's a couple ways I can go about this. One of them is uh, moving all of my stuff into the fiber channel array that's in here, and then hooking that up to a server. I have a couple V240s here, and they don't take up nearly as much electricity as the other stuff does, so I might do that. Um, at the same time, I was considering an Apple option, running something PowerPC. The G5 is based on the IBM Power 4 architecture, so it's not as awesome as my IBM System P5 that I have, but the problem with the System P5 is I don't have any hard drive sleds for it. Otherwise, I'd be using that instead because that system is nuts. It's insanely fast. So what does that leave me with? Well, that leaves me with that G5 I found over there is going to trade a sun system for it. I might still do that. But thanks to an awesome person in the IRC, it's really cool, uh, who I'm going to leave as anonymous at this point, but you know who you are, and you are awesome. Uh, they sent me something. They sent me this. Now, most people will see straight away and they're like, oh, it's a Mac Pro. But it's really not. It is actually the G5 Power Mac, which is cool. I'm the Mac Pro's Intel and 
it's an awesome machine don't get me wrong but this is g5 which is as equally awesome in a different way and i might actually end up using this to host my website and do my various day-to-day -day linux stuff and i will leave the existing sun server with its fiber channel array intact and basically just shut it off and power it on when i need to store something large onto there so this might actually become my new server and it's a two gigahertz dual processor machine right now it's two single core processors and i am looking at getting two dual core processors so i have four cores i got it here powered it on i was in the middle of installing debian and it just shut off in the middle of the installation and i noticed it was a little dusty so i figured yeah maybe the power supply is full of crap the rest of the machine looked pretty okay it was definitely there was definitely dust in there <clears throat> but you'll notice that you can't really see the power supply in here and that's because it's buried in there which is something that may easily be overlooked when somebody else is dusting this out so using my nice air duster tool i was able to get in there and a shitload of dust blew out of the front of it so um short of taking the power supply out and taking it apart and dusting it um i think this machine will run okay now it's also missing the plastic uh, like you take the side panel off and then there's this clear plastic molded piece that's actually the air duct for here and then it dips in a little bit here and then there's a door here so you can actually remove drives and stuff um, I think it does go all the way up here I guess we'll see when it gets here but yeah I don't expect that to hurt cooling too much um, but it does a little bit and I, I did find one on eBay already for like five whole dollars, so I decided to order that. And it's got two and a half gigs of RAM. I think I'm going to take the RAM out of this other server, just kind of swap places, see how that goes. But yeah, it's, it's a really awesome machine. The case is minty fresh. There's a couple of light scuffs on it. It's a nice aluminum case. I should polish this might do that rose supports that it's like a <laughs> yeah polish it and, and name the server shiny but the case is pretty mint right now i think i'll leave it as is for a while apple was always ahead of their time for styling and quality of the product although the water cooled versions of these leaked all the time so when i get the dual dual cores it will come with a water cooled loop and i will actually have to sort that out before i put the processors in the machine um right now they're like a hundred bucks i think for the for a matched pair with the cooling system so hopefully by the end of this coming week i will have the funds to to do that after I pay all my bills. If I pay all my bills, and I have $100 left over, it's definitely going towards this because this is just awesome. It's got uh, dual front side buses. So there's a front side bus for each processor socket. It runs at half the CPU clock speed. So in this case, it's two one gigahertz front side buses. Uh, it's got, this is an AGP Pro machine. So it's PCI X and AGP the this is an early 2005 model the late 2005 model actually had PCI Express but that's okay this is going to be a server I don't care so much so yeah that's that's that cool ass machine I might throw a fiber channel card in here and hook it up to an array haven't decided I get two drive bays so I might just throw couple of small drives in there and then have storage elsewhere I haven't decided quite how I'm gonna do this yet I got firewire uh, there's firewire 800 on here gigabit Ethernet there's a modem 
There's provisions for Bluetooth and wireless, and those cables actually end up underneath this fan, which... Oh. How does that unplug? Oh, it just pulls, but the wires are skinny. The speaker wasn't plugged in. Now I have to plug that in. So anyway, that's the modem right there. And the slot for the wireless card is right there. I don't know if I'm going to put wireless in it, being that it's a server, it's definitely not necessary. I may use it as an awesome Linux workstation though, and still use the G5 as a server. I haven't decided. Maybe comment, tell me what you think. But this is a pretty cool, pretty cool find. Thank you very much, you know who you are. This machine will get loved long time. I plan on restoring it. So this is my little restoration project. See how that goes. So I'll plug it in and then we'll turn it on. I'll show you what it looks like. What are you doing? Uh, working on my uh, projector cart. I'm trying Pro to get that up and running. Projector again. cart? Yeah. So we're going to have like a legit AV cart, which is a projector. Yeah. Is there going to be a sound system on there as well? Oh, yeah. Surround sound. Fixed that already. And tested it and it works. A lot of dust came out of this. Yes. I looked over and it was kind of hazy. <laughs> One thing has me concerned, got a bulging cap. Of, I'm not sure if it was bulging before, but it definitely is now. But it's not ruptured, so I might be okay to come spot and buy for a little bit, but... Usually you can, you can get away for a little while. I know on my Sun server downstairs I have a card. The, it's a single board computer on a PCI card. Oh, yeah. And there's caps on that card that are actually leaking. Oh, yeah. But the card works okay still. All right. So, yeah. I think you can get away with it for a little while. What is this, a uh, Core 2 machine? Uh, well, it's Mark's Pentium D, right? Yeah, I think it's a oh, okay. Core 2 Duo or something. Okay. I know it's dual core. Dual core. Maybe a single core with hyper threading. I'd, I'd have to boot it up. And it works. It plays like 1080p movies, so... Nice. Yeah, Iron Man. Cool. Hell yeah. You'll have to show me the cart when you're done. Yeah. Well, it's the one that's sitting up in my... That's always been sitting up in my front office there. Oh, uh... Yeah, the, the tower. In the middle? Yep. Okay. That's cool. It's my mobile projection cart. I wonder if running the projector and all that actually heats the office at all. Not really. <laughs> Not, Not as really. much as you think. As warm as that little projector gets. Huh. Which sucks, I know. Kidwell said every BTU of heat counts, but... I don't know. We're gonna... Some, at some point this week, I'm gonna put the breakers in the office for downstairs. <laughs> and I shall try my server downstairs. See if it makes a difference heat-wise. Alright. Oh, did you get with your uh, card? The card router? No. Uh, yeah, that that was a problem I had last night. I just tried to cut out boards for Obliterus in the IRC, and the stepper motor for the Y axis, I think, um, got stuck because oh. it's cold. Oh. And Aaron had the same problem on the laser engraver. Yep. And he actually brought that up to the wood shop to get it to and warm up. It works perfect. It worked perfectly after that, so... I'm either going to have to move the board mill if I want to use it, or... Um, try and heat up rapid prototyping, and we don't have any space heaters in this building. Um, so I figured I'll try and use a server. It actually kicks out enough heat that it could be considered a space heater. But I don't know, it's fucking frozen hell down there too. So it may not work at all. Um, high voltage. How's high voltage doing today? It should be 57. Um, it got kind of late last night. I went and checked it. It was 57. I just left it holding that temp because 
You can't really push the temp at night and then leave without it fucking up. Kidwell and I might buy a thermostat, or build a thermostat, I'm sorry, instead of this off-the-shelf one. Uh, we're going to get with Allied, or Chris's, it's supposed to, it's 48 degrees in here, fuck. Really? It's like a losing battle. That's so annoying. So that's the problem we're faced with. So I might actually end up building a thermostat. We'll see how that goes. I need to reorganize my time. I haven't been, I'm out of focus too. All right. Um, need to spend my evenings during the week working on stuff more than fucking off, I guess you could say. But that's, I don't know. Depends on what you mean by fucking off. Because fucking off here is making this work. But at the same time, this is part of a bigger picture. Uh, the other thing that I have slated for today is my GTI. It's in here melting. It's actually doing pretty good. There's a giant puddle on the floor. The ice is finally coming out of the wheel wells. This poor thing, I need to spend like a hundred dollars on rust proofing paint. And get that sorted out, but after it melts, we're going to do the control arm bushings today. So that'll be good fun. That's going to be kind of a big project. Maybe another hour. And I'll get started. I just hate being rained on. Fucking salted snow crap. I hate that shit. So. Alright, well, I'm going to plug this in. I'll show you what's going on. So it's... It's... It's whatever time it is. I don't care. Same time it was 24 hours ago. Same time it was 24 hours ago. Thank you, Aaron. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I gave up on this. The... I boot the system test disk. It randomly shuts off. I've... Tried different RAM. I've reseated the power connectors. I've dusted the damn thing out. I've disabled various system devices and pulled fans. I can't get the fans to default to a high RPM. The system doesn't seem to be overheating. Could be a power supply issue, could be a logic board issue, could be a processor issue. I don't know. I give up. I'll deal with it later. So, for now, I have started changing the control arm bushings. I picked the easy side because that bolt is that long. And that's where that bolt is over there. So that's going to be wonderfully fun. Uh, so anyway, here's what the old bushing looked like on this side. Yummy. Yeah. And that's not even the drive wheel. On this side, I'd be surprised if there was any of that rubber left in there. But yeah, that's where we're at. I got R32 bushings to go back in it. So as you can see, there's no rubber gap, no bullshit. That one's already replaced, so I got to put that one in now. That was the old one of those, which doesn't seem to be in bad shape. So, yep. Stuff that in there, put this back on, and one side's done. Alright, so that's done. So we can go back in the car. That didn't work out so well, but luckily I have things like this laying around. So, that's how that got in there. Alright. 
some of my talk All right, got the passenger post. side bushing out. And, uh, this is the drive wheel. I read them a statement letter in the email saying if I could use a little bit music. See, notice the factory and, uh, gap I here. Gave them a fair I'm actually going to so, make it handle and, a little bit better, stiffen things up by using a solid rubber video. bushing so instead of the gap. I some of my video shoots and Doing I sent Google it off to him. And he said, oh, okay, so I'm going to go to basic workshop set up, kind of deal with video showing. I said, yeah, so pretty much any music that I use now, I got to do a disclaimer right now for uh, just uh, just uh, so, so that people won't be bootlegging. Cool. All right, first flight. First, first flight, initial test. See if I eat it. Really like a really deep one. LEDs on the road. You know I've had exactly one helicopter that had LEDs on the road. That was, that was the point. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. Fucking big bird for indoors. I think this may be at the scale where it's, you really should fly this outside. Because this one's big enough that if I land this on a car, it's going to suck. But it is nice and stable. It doesn't get thrown around by the wind as much as the other one does. It still gets moved around a little bit. Still not getting my neck anymore. <laughs> yeah, this is big enough to work it. Trying to cut my legs off? No, oh, I'm just expressing the pain. Hey, I, I hit the chair a little bit. A little bit. Well, you're not distracted. Auto transform. What about an auto transform? That's a variable auto transform. Yes, it is. Right but pretend it isn't. Okay. If I tap it at like a quarter of the way around it. For the, for the secondary winding. The primary winding is the whole coil, and the secondary winding is a quarter yes. of the same coil. Yes. And you'd have had three different answers. The motors on this look a little bit better. Yeah, it's a lot more powerful. It's also a lot bigger. It's also a little bouncy. But yeah, a lot bigger motor, a lot more power. This is a V913. The ones we were flying before were V911. We should tuck this up. Now your balance charge for the battery pack. Huh? Yeah, that's the charger. I'm 
not going to do anything serious with it in here because I've had my experiences in here with the air currents before. And I know not to push my luck. And this is really at a scale that it should be outside. But she's stable. It's not nearly as difficult and twitchy as the little one. Ground effect's right about there. That's my ground effect line. You can see it drop in the ground effect. It also does something the other one doesn't. You can hear the rotor noise on this one. It's big enough you can actually hear rotor noise, not just motor. You have to realize that the rotor disc is a hell of a lot bigger than just the shiny part you see. Right, the shiny part's just the fly bars. Yeah. It's a lot more stable and docile than the other one. Like the 911 is a twitchy little fucker. This thing's really rubbery. It's bouncy. But it doesn't want to like split. Watch out. <laughs> oh no! This one you can't bounce off the flag. That was the lesson we learned there. Uh, Once you get too close to that wall, it sucks you in. Fix your body. Huh? Oh, fix your body. Your body's all fucked up. Story of my life. Yeah. We Shred there. Yeah, this is this is definitely into the realm of should be an outdoor toy. Yeah, that'd suck if it hit you in the head. Yeah, <laughs> fuck up your whole day if it hits you in the head. All right, let's make sure everything's okay. We have a balance problem. Yeah, we got a vibration, which tells me something's probably popped off. Fly bar looks a little bent. Fly bar is a little bent. That's not, that shouldn't be big enough to cause my balance problem. Like that. It's not that my fly bar is bent. It's that my spindle's bent. Oh god, really? Yeah, I think my main rotor's bent. It'll still fly. But my main my main uh, rotor shaft has a bit of a bend to it. Well, once you get it in the air, it doesn't look so bad. That's because it spins fast enough that the vibration doesn't heat it. It's still controllable. That's a lot of helicopters.
successful, maybe twice. And we may have bent the main shaft a little. That's okay, that's an easy part to get. So this is the V913. Four channel? Four channels. It's the same as the V911 except bigger and a million times more stable. It's good. Motor is very warm. Nice little can motor. Yeah. The I'm just, I can feel the heat coming on my pinky finger up here. Stick, oh, okay. stick your hand down the top hole. Oh yeah. yeah it's warm in there. So. Cool. Not bad for first flight. So, finished this last night. Um, now I just need tires and a brake master cylinder and it's leaking coolant from somewhere other than the radiator, which sucks. So I need a thermostat housing, crack pipe, thermostat, and radiator. Windshield, and someday, someday I'd like the passenger window to roll down. But that's probably not happening for a while. <sighs> Just cleaning right now. About to go to lunch. But tidying up from last night's mess. Getting ready for this week's mess. Good fun. Good fun. Well, this battery's dead. Looks like it was made in 2010. Well... I guess that's about average for a battery these days. <sighs> Stupid GM side posts. So I'm gonna take this out. I'm going to put Duralast back into it. This looks relatively straightforward. So, yep, easy enough. <laughs> 